Right, so you didn't take rapping serious until you met Biggie, right? Mm-hmm. I, I, well, I'm not gonna say I didn't take it seriously, because I always did it, and I knew I was good at it, but right. I didn't, you know, ever think there would be, like, a, a career prospect out of, okay. out of doing it. Me and Big actually met at a show. He had a show one time here, and me and my girlfriends went to his show, and, um, after the show, it was just chaos everywhere. Like everybody wanted pictures and, you know, girls are throwing underwear out of their cars at him. It was wild. And he saw me and asked me to come here. And I went over there, you know, obviously I got a picture. I just really wanted a picture. And it was just kind of started talking and in the midst of us talking, there's still like girls screaming and throwing, <laughs> throwing numbers, panties, everything, just, just wild. And, um, after I took, uh, after I got my picture with him, he was like, can I take a picture of you? So I was like, you want a picture of me? He was like, yeah. So we're literally outside taking pictures of each other. And then we just got into a conversation and kind of just went from there. Right. <laughs> the funny part about that is he didn't know I could rap because I mean, you know, you meet in my mind at that point, Big was like the best rapper in the world. So of course I'm not gonna sit there like, hey, you know, I rap too. So it probably wasn't until maybe like a year in to our relationship and it was a really weird experience because what happened was I had the code to his phone and <laughs> he had all of these crazy messages on his phone from random girls saying all kind of crazy stuff. And I just thought it would be funny if I took like all of the girls' names put them in this like rhyme I wrote and like exposed that I had had the code to his phone, which he didn't know. And then one day I just had like randomly, I don't know if we were together, I called him, I don't remember. And I was like, I, um, you know, I got something I want to tell you. And I literally wrapped this whole thing with all of the girls' names that were on his voicemail <laughs> into, you know, into his face. And he's just looking at me like, what the hell and like different things that they said in the messages i had incorporated them into the rhyme it was like you know meant to be a joke but you know his way of kind of getting out of that whole situation is hey yo you could really rap <laughs> so that's really how i started like it was total a total fluke but he was like you got some skills like and you wrote that yourself and I was like, dude, are we supposed to be talking about all these messages you had in your phone with these girls and you worried about whether or not I could rap or not? He was like, no, you really can rap. You got some skills. So, you know, it kind of went from that to him telling me, if you write around every day, you're going to get better and better. Because he really was like, you know, asking me questions. And in my mind, I'm like, oh, he's but he just trying to be serious. Like, if you write around every day, you're going to get better and better and better. So that's what I started doing. And, you know, he would ask me if I was in Philly, he would call me like, did you write around today? And ask me to spit it. And I'm like, I don't know if he's just doing this to appease me or if he's dead serious and, you know, really thinks that I can rap. But he really did think I could rap and, you know, he really thought I had talent. So the, every time I wrote around, I, I felt myself getting better. And I, obviously, you know, the more you write, the more your confidence builds, so. That's how it started. I never, I right. never lived with Big. We never lived together. I always lived in Philly. And by that point I had had my second daughter. So I had two daughters and um, my youngest daughter was under one. I met Big when she was like six months old. So I lived in Philly the whole time. So I would just go back and forth to, uh, well, he lived in Jersey actually. So I would just go back and forth to Jersey to see him. Um, but no, we never lived together. On the phone, so you know, just, randomly talk and you know i mean i never was like the type of person that had like a i guess i don't want to call it a groupy mentality but i was never like you know overly intrigued with the fact that you know oh my god this is biggie smalls like to me he was just you know big like he was so cool you know what i mean and our personalities meshed so well it was easy to you know develop a friendship with him but um he actually invited me to come to California one time. He was doing the Martin show. And by that point, we had been talking and, you know, on the phone, corresponding a lot. Shit, I heard you was running things. I see you still running your mouth. Man, say what? 
for a background singer to go on the road with me. That ain't gonna be no problem here. Motown! Any old body oh, up in here? You just can't invite anybody in there. Hey! <laughs> Mark, you didn't tell me you knew Biggie Smalls. Come on in here, man. You know you're doing. Nice to meet you. What, what, what should I call you? I love it when they call me Big Pop. <laughs> Yo, it got to be like 3,000 people out there, man. Yeah, they finally figured out where I live. <laughs> oh, man, now, now I know what Michael Jackson goes through, man. Yo, I went out, the word got out, man. Everybody and their mother out there. Nah, man, come on. <laughs> but, <laughs> since you did bring it up, I do have a little act, and it goes a little something like this. Hit it! I went out to LA for him to um, film the Martin show and that's when, you know, our relationship kind of went to the next level. Oh, the next level, right. like, you know, it, 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 you know, I didn't, at that point, you know, when you're first dealing with somebody and y'all were friends first and then you take it to the next level, you're not really in your mind thinking, you know, this is a relationship. And then at the end of the day, I'm, you know, we're, we were very young. So I'm not thinking, you know, this is something super serious or it's gonna turn this to something super serious, but it it, it really kind of developed really fast because after the, um, the LA trip, like we were together all the time. Like I was going up to New York all the time to see him. And you know, if he had a show out of town, he would fly me out, whatever. So, you know, I was, we were just always together, so. Well, Race. Big had a separate company um, that Junior Mafia was on called Indias that was with his partner, um, Lance Rivera. And so like all the Junior Mafia songs and, and records and stuff was were going through Indias. So at some point we started having conversations about, you know, me becoming an artist for real. And at that point, I'm still not really, you know, in my mind, taking this super seriously. Like, are you just saying this? Because, you know, at this point we're in a full-fledged relationship. So I'm like, I don't know if he's just saying this because I'm his girl or is he dead serious? But he was dead serious. So his plan was to start a group called The Commission, which initially was supposed to be Puff, C's, Jay-Z, him, and me. And that's what he wanted to do. And he had this whole idea because like my, my, um, at the time, like my skill of, of rapping was really hardcore, like, cause I always liked hardcore artists and that's what I listened to, NWA, like Onyx, like those were like my, my favorite groups. So, you know, my style was really hard. And in his mind, you know, how I looked to him didn't fit how I rapped and he liked that. So he was like, he had this whole strategy where he wanted me to actually, it, he wanted to find a way for me to come out literally and people just to hear me rap, but not see my face at all at first. So nobody would see me like, I don't know if he meant like a mask or how he, you know, had planned it in his mind, but he wanted people to like hear me rap and then at some point kind of like unveil me. But you know, it never really got to that point. But, you know, if you go and listen to um, Life After Death, you know, when the record was beef, you know, he shouts out the whole commission and that that was really his plan was to do that. So when he puts my name in the West Beef record. And the commission never happened because he passed away. Right. This is your boy, yep. Joke, right here on IBP Media. Make sure you go ahead and subscribe right now. Then I want you to like, comment and share and make sure those out the rhythms come up on the, on the station right now. Do it real big right now. This your boy, The Joker. No doubt, I'm out.